from a giant cockroach prized by thousands to a creature better known for its stench. Here's some of the scariest creatures that, believe it or not, are kept as pets. But first, we'd like to thank the Wrestling Bros for commenting on our video titled Largest Prehistoric Sea Monsters. We're glad we could teach you a thing or two, brothers, and keep those comments coming. Tarantulas. Keeping one of these creatures as a pet could make for an interesting adventure, and one that we'll say no thanks to. Imagine looking in your spider's cage and realizing it's escaped. This is a risk we're simply unwilling to take. However, there are plenty of people out there that are excited to have tarantulas as pets. It's not easy to see why, but still, we can understand that it could be cool for people who don't mind the creatures. Apparently, they require very little space. They also come in a variety of colors. Check out the green bottle blue, for instance. It looks really neat, and it's not too scary to look at. Oh, who are we kidding? It's absolutely terrifying! Let's get to the next scary pet, and hopefully it's a little less creepy crawly in nature. Hissing cockroaches. Oh, come on! Alright, sorry everyone, but it's okay, we'll make it through this together. The hissing cockroach is a large, wingless, slow-moving species of cockroach native to the large island of Madagascar. They're so named for their hissing sound, which they produce through respiratory openings on their bodies. They require a relatively small living area, such as a fish tank with screens. In captivity, they can subsist on vegetables and pellet food that's high in protein. And yes, they are very popular pets. If you do happen to own a hissing cockroach, you probably know how good they are at climbing. They're so effective, in fact, that they can scale glass. Tigers. Here's a shocking statistic for you, and one that animal welfare groups aren't too happy about. According to the World Wildlife Foundation, as of July 2014, there were around 5,000 tigers being kept captive in the US, compared to approximately 3,200 roaming the wild. Less than 10% held in captivity reside in zoos or other similar facilities, meaning the majority can be found as a part of sideshows or simply in people's backyards. Mike Tyson famously owned three Bengal tigers for about a year. He got rid of them because they were too costly to keep. Think about that, a man with millions of dollars couldn't afford to keep tigers. It's not surprising though, as tigers require large amounts of raw meat every day. It's why they're best left alone in the wild, their natural homes. Sure, it could be cool to own a tiger, but then again, it's a lot cooler to not own a tiger. Snakes. These slithering creatures can be found everywhere on Earth except Antarctica, Iceland, Greenland, New Zealand, and Ireland. Though there has to be people in those places that keep them as pets, seeing as how popular they've become in such a capacity. At the same time, snakes are also one of the most widely feared animals on the planet. They often play a villainous role in movies and the psyches of many people. There are also those, such as PETA, who are strictly against keeping them as pets. Many owners don't properly care for their snakes, who themselves will become lonely if kept isolated and away from other snakes. Often, such creatures will end up escaping and getting themselves injured, sometimes fatally. Scorpions. Many people are turning to the exotic scorpion as a creature to keep as a pet. Their unique appearance has fascinated humans for thousands of years, and they're becoming increasingly popular as everyday house companions. With over 1,500 different species roaming our planet, there are plenty of interesting choices. For instance, its mild sting and docile attitude make the large emperor scorpion a popular choice for beginners. The Tanzanian red claw and Thai black are other popular choices, if you're into that sort of thing, of course. Rats. People who've only known rats as unwelcome visitors in their homes would never even think of keeping one as a pet. They can be big gross pests after all. But for thousands of years, they've also been bred to be a gentle, warm addition to the family. When they're brought up in such a manner, their creatures are absolutely fabulous, like a mini pet dog. They're eager to play with their owners, who they develop a strong bond with. They can learn their own names and even come when they're called. They constantly want to play and also enjoy being pet all over. Praying Mantis. There's no insect in the animal kingdom quite like the Praying Mantis. With thousands of known species and counting, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and nothing moves around quite like a mantis. Their overall appearance could easily be described as alien. They're so fascinating to observe that it's not all that surprising people like to keep them as pets. Unfortunately for owners, their life cycle is short, only around one year, and only half of this time is spent as an adult. Sometimes people also set these creatures loose in their gardens to deal with unwanted pests that could damage their crops. American Pitbull Terrier. 
Muscular and solidly built, the American Pit Bull Terrier can be a great guard dog and companion. But ask anyone who's worked in a dog shelter or dog daycare and they'll tell you that this and other breeds of pit bulls can be unruly, aggressive, and downright dangerous if they're brought up the wrong way. While they can be used as companion dogs for the impaired, police dogs that sniff out bombs, and drugs, and even therapy canines, they also make up the majority of dogs used for illegal dog fighting in the United States. It's for the latter reason that the breed is banned in some places, like Ontario, Canada, and the United Kingdom. Capybara. For anyone out there who has a beloved pet hamster, here's your favorite creature on steroids. Saying this animal is the largest rodent on Earth is an automatic turnoff for many. Sideshows used to use the creature to sell tickets, billing them as the world's biggest rats. But get past this fact and the capybara is actually an extremely friendly, outgoing creature. In the wild, they're said to get along with almost anything, even predators like caiman, who would normally try to make a meal out of a creature of similar proportions. But hey, the capybara is really popular and can be an excellent companion as any human has been around one knows. So what if it's a rodent? Would you guys keep a capybara as a pet? Hedgehog. Hedgehogs have been living amongst us since humans have been on the planet, but it's only been recently that we've become interested in keeping them in captivity and as pets. When properly taken care of, they reportedly make for excellent housemates. Many new hedgehog owners will be alarmed when their new pet starts spinning all over themselves out of nowhere. While it's supposed to be pretty gross, this is totally normal behavior. Hedgehogs form a spitball when they encounter an object with a new scent. This spitball captures the new scent. They then throw their heads back and spit all over themselves, covering their entire bodies in the new odor, possibly to camouflage themselves from predators. It may seem odd to keep hedgehogs when you think about their most well-known characteristic, their spiky quills, but really they're not so bad. They can't really shoot them, they flick them onto predators as a deterrent. Sugar Glider. It's pretty easy to see why the Sugar Glider is gaining popularity as a household pet. Their lifespans, which are usually over 10 years, and intelligence are similar to that of a dog. They can learn their names, respond to calls, and even be taught tricks. Their sweet tooth, as their name would imply, can rival the most sugar-addicted person you know. When fed their proper diet, which includes fruits and vegetables, they have no discernible odor. To make things even better, they keep themselves impeccably clean. Once they bond with their owners, they become an inseparable part of the family. This means that you can go practically anywhere with your sugar glider uncaged and not have to worry about it suddenly running away. Many prefer them over rodents, and it's probably because they're not rodents. They're marsupials like kangaroos and koala bears. Plus, in the wild, they're very social creatures and like to hang out in large groups. This means they can become lonely very easily especially in isolation. So taking one out of its natural environment mm, probably isn't the best idea. Wallaby. As pets, the wallaby isn't a good creature for most. They like to hop around a lot like their close relative the kangaroo, and so they require a lot of space. This means that the everyday apartment or house crammed in the middle of a big city isn't going to cut it. They're also, like sugar gliders, very social animals who will become miserable unless they get to hang out with another wallaby, so it's highly recommended to get at least two. To top things off, they're nocturnal, so unless you happen to be a similar creature, you guys may not be awake at the same time and that could get annoying. They can get pretty big, up to three and a half feet and over 50 pounds. Skunk. There's only a handful of states in the country that even allow you to own a skunk as a pet. They've been bred in captivity for decades. This process involves them being unarmed when they're only a few weeks old. Though this removal is a relatively simple procedure, it's one that's controversial, with some arguing that it's cruel treatment. They can be fun creatures who love to play, but if left to their own devices, they can become bored and terrifying, potentially destroying the whole house if left alone long enough. Like the huskies we'll talk about in a minute, these animals are often abandoned when they become a handful. This fate spells sure doom for the creatures, as being bred in captivity, they lack the instincts and those scent glands it takes for them to survive in the wild. Some of these pets seem scary, while others, like those domesticated skunks or sugar gliders, are just hard to believe. It seems like as time goes on, people will continue to stretch the limits of what animals they can keep in their homes. What does everyone out there think about keeping these or other strange, exotic animals as pets? Let us know in the comments section below, and thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow on our next video. Huskies. Game of Thrones first aired in 2011 to a great deal of fanfare. It has seemingly increased in popularity with each passing season. Many fans fell in love with the show's lovable, loyal direwolves. While those creatures are fictional, real-life dogs that look similar, like huskies, have been purchased in droves. 
This has started a scary trend in which the dogs have also been abandoned at alarming rates. Shelters and rescue groups across the country have seen a spike in the creature's abandonment since the show first started airing. Often, getting these dogs is a knee-jerk sort of reaction. Many people don't do enough research, so they get overwhelmed when they don't realize how active and full of energy the dog can get. Regular exercise is vital. Things got so bad that Peter Dinklage, the actor that plays Tyrion Lannister on the show, released a joint statement with PETA on the matter recently. 